Hey, what's up? It's David Duford here, home of the best life insurance sales training you've ever seen. Today's topic of today's video is what exactly is a lead? So this may seem elementary to some of you guys out there, but I think it's important, especially for newer agents, maybe struggling or frustrated with leads or maybe just about to start working leads. You really need to have an accurate understanding of what a lead really is, no matter what kind of product you sell, um, and also to get an idea of what to expect as you work the lead. So what I want to do in this video is take some time to define what a lead is. And then in contrast, define what it is not. Sometimes it's better uh, to understand what a lead is by defining what you probably won't ever see out of a lead on a very consistent basis. And then we're going to uh, uh, describe what implications there are uh, based on this definition and then tie it into what really matters uh, in the, the scheme of things uh, as it relates to the law of large numbers and working your sales and marketing system. So what exactly is a lead? Is a lead a sale? No, it is not. I wish it was. I wish all leads were always sales, but uh, alas, they are not. A lead essentially can just be de best described as somebody who raises their hand and express a modicum, a marginal level of interest. In case you don't know, modicum or marginal means basically just this much interest at a minimum. It could be this much interest. It could be, you know, tiny. But what we're trying to do with a lead program is just get the kernel of the beginning of interest. And then to, from there, use the sales presentation, whether done over the phone or done in person, to arouse more interest, to qualify the lead, and to determine if they fit our criteria for being a buyer. So this is really important to understand because there's a couple of takeaways from what a lead is not that you need to understand, especially if you're getting started in selling insurance or any other kind of products, to better understand what you can anticipate out of your sales and marketing system. So for example, I, I mentioned is a lead a sale? No, it's never, well, I don't say never. But most of the time, a lead is not a sale. The paradox of selling anything in life and basing your business around a lead system, typically a purchase lead system, more, exa ex more likely than most of you guys are going to be doing some kind of purchase lead system. Referral generation uh, done correctly ne isn't necessarily uh, this. But with a purchase lead system, generally speaking, a minority of your business will be closed into applications, closed deals, and so on and so forth. The best way to describe the, the paradox of, of sales is that you'll literally get more people telling you no. You'll experience rejection and resistance to selling something to them more. And you'll hear no more, meaning more people won't buy. However, your concerns aren't with the, most, the majority of whom you meet. It's with that minority that says, yes, they do buy and they do transact with you. And that transaction yield such a high multiple to the average cost of your leads that it's worth hearing no the vast majority of the time for the minority of the times of the yeses you hear that profits or returns to you in many cases with many lead, prog many lead programs, three to one, four to one, five to one or greater. So what this all comes down to meaning is that you can pretty much anticipate a good in my line of business life insurance agent is going to close a prox or convert 20 to 25% of his leads into a closed deal. On the flip side, that means that 75% to 80% of your leads are going to say various things to you like, I'm broke, go to hell, I'm not interested, I've already got life insurance, you're the fifth person I've seen, you're an asshole, okay? You're going to hear all sorts of negative negativity and rejection. But the strangeness of this business, of any sales business, is that your concern should not be for that. It should be for seeing that minority of the business that converts into profit well above and beyond the cost of generating those leads. So where does this all play into and, and why is this really important for you new guys to really understand this? Well, first of all, since a minority of our leads are not, or I should say the majority of our leads are not gonna buy and a minority of our leads are going to buy, the only way that you can see consistency in producing a lot of business and whatever it is that you're selling is that you must commit 
to a consistent level of production in appointments or presentations on a daily and weekly basis. This is the principal cause for many salespeople's failures. Most salespeople are good in front of the prospects. There's not really a lot of bad salespeople, but there's a lot of salespeople that don't do enough activity. And that is usually the demise of many salespeople. They just don't get enough leads, or more, more likely than not, they just don't see enough people to sell life insurance, insurance, or any kind of product in general. The solution, therefore, is that when you've got a 25% of the chance, uh, 25% of the time getting a yes, and 75% of the time getting a no, if your goal is to close X, you've, you can't reliably hit, let's say, the number's five. If you do the math statistically, uh, if your goal is getting five closed deals a week and you've got a closing ratio of 50% of presentations completed, statistically, the odds are not on your side that out of five presentations, you're going to get five closed deals. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. If 75% of the time it's a no and 25% of the time it's a yes, that means if, you, if you're at bat five times to see that outcome, you've got the odds well stacked against your favor. However, the secret, and this is what the main takeaway here is, guys, it's not necessarily in the lead business. It's not about converting at some insane two de standard deviations away from the norm level where you're closing 40 or 50 percent of your business. If you can, kudos to you. That's not really what we're trying to strive for. We're trying to be good enough in our closing, which most of the time means 20 to 25 percent of the time. And once you can measurably or consistently achieve that, the next step is to scale that up to a level in which you want to be at from an activity standpoint. The first goal, especially for new agents, is to become comfortable with the process. And then the second goal right away is to hit a number of presentations on a weekly basis to achieve the kind of numbers, let's call it five closed deals a week, uh, in order to uh, hit it. So again, what does this translate to? You can't just do five appointments a week. In many cases, 10 appointments isn't enough either. I think the magic number, I learned this from a guy named Travis Tubbs. I've heard this uh, recounted in other insurance sales books. You've got to get 15 appointments a week. That is a magic number for a lot of different insurance lines. That means usually three or four appointments a day over a four-day, maybe five-day period of work time. You could do seven or eight in a day over two days. It doesn't matter the days. It's just the appointments. And what we find, anybody who trains uh, sales agents, insurance agents, what we find is if an agent can accurately hit that number or whatever number to hit that goal of whatever their production is, it consistency comes from it on a, a lot smoother basis. There's less ups and downs in the agent's business. And they find that they're, the business is a lot easier because, first of all, you don't focus on that one lead as being you have to sell it because that's the way you pay your mortgage. You, you lose the commission breath where every deal has to happen. You kind of develop this, well, so what? You know, one deal out of 15 doesn't go through. This person doesn't want to buy. I don't care. And that detachment actually attracts more people to you because if you're over eager to sell, then people repel from you. But if you're relaxed and you're, and you're, and you're paced and you're, you're letting things happen as they do, people are attracted to that type of mentality. So... The takeaway here, guys, is as you get started in any type of sales business, understand that leads are just opportunities, okay? They're people who express marginal interest. It's your job as a salesperson to visit with that person, to discover why they requested the information, uh, no matter what kind of lead it is, and then to fact find, pre-qualify, and see if they meet your criteria for buying. And on just as important to do a high enough volume of these appointments to achieve the kind of income goals you want. The great thing about sales is that, in a sense, is as much of, a, of an art as it is a science. We know that we can hit a certain level of productivity if we scale up to a certain level of activity. The guy that can do five appointments a week can do, probably in many cases, 20, 25 plus if he just has the time to put it together and make it work on a consistent level and a consistent basis. So understand, as you new guys get into this, don't hang on, the, uh, don't hang on to every lead that you see to try to make and manufacture something out of it. Understand that you have to have a certain lead flow. 
You have to work on getting your presentation closing ratio to a certain percentage that's good enough and then consistently hit that. Of course, all the while tr trying to critique and improve yourself, but then to raise the level in which you uh, can sell by raising your activity level to produce more sales. Or the other alternative, which really wasn't talked about, maybe we can save it for another video, is to scale up your market. Uh, instead of selling uh, a lower income market, sell a higher income market. And then you get higher close ratios, or not necessarily higher close ratios, but higher uh, ticket prices doing literally the same kind of activity. My name is David Duford. I hope you enjoyed today's training. Uh, I do a lot of different sales training for insurance agents and sales professionals on this channel. And uh, uh, what I do is pretty much uh, focus helping insurance agents grow their personal businesses as well as insurance agencies grow their agencies as well with mentorship and coaching. I'm the author of two different books. You can see them right here on Amazon, Interviews with Top Producing Insurance Agents and the Official Guide to Selling Final Expense Insurance. Great books, uh, whether you're new or experienced in selling insurance. If you have any comments, please leave them below. Thumb me up if you haven't already and make sure you subscribe to this channel for more engaging, relevant and useful practical information you can put to work in your own sales business. Dave DeFord's the name. We'll see you next time. Take care.